Welcome back to the channel guys, episode 33 of the Youth Academy Challenge. We've got an intake today, the preview was fantastic. Let's see how we're getting on. 29 games into season 13 and this is what the table looks like. We're ninth, 43 points. We are level on points with Modena and Roma are one point ahead of us. Lazio are three points ahead of us. We do have a plus goal difference. Juventus, by the way, are four points below us. They do have a game in hand, but they've got a minus five goal difference. Juventus... I'm going to say, aren't very good. But they did beat us in the Europa League knockout playoff round. You know, the one before the round of 16. They beat us on penalties. Very annoying. They beat us the first game 1-0. And then we beat them the second game 2-1. And then Van Gion missed a penalty. And Fino missed a penalty. And they beat us on penalties 4-1. Very poor from us, penalty shootout-wise. My goalkeeper was pretty good inside the match. Yeah, we just... I thought we were going to win it in normal time, to be honest. We had, some good, we had some good chances, but we didn't. We couldn't. And, uh, and yeah, that's how it went down. We had a fairly young squad playing, but, I mean, we have got a young squad anyway. If Pucci would have done a bit more that game, he missed a few chances. Is what it is. He's only 17. But, yeah, that was one of those things. Really annoying because... Those teams there, if we'd have drawn one of those teams, I would have fancied us to get into the quarterfinal. Um, obviously, Man United's come in, your Chelsea's, your Marseille's, Sporting. They're really tough. But if we'd have got, I don't know, maybe a Vittoria Gummeresh or Esther or Pryor or maybe a Freiburg, I'm a B. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, but... Obviously, we wouldn't have won it, but I was looking to try and get the reputation up. Hopefully, the fact that we got through the group stage means that we did that. We're on a bad run of form at the moment. We lost in the semi-final first leg of the Coppa Italia, 3-1 to AC Milan, four games ago. We weren't very good. We were okay. Now nah, we were bad. We were bad. I remember the game now. Because it was yesterday, we were bad. They deserved to win. Um... 3-1 was probably fair, to be honest. I'm just thinking there, we had a penalty and that was like most of our chances. Uh, we were just not very good. Again, Gag, Ulo, scoring from the spot, very misreliable. They were just too good for us, and they are too good for us. I'm hoping at home we can maybe spring a surprise, maybe beat them 3-1 or 2-0, maybe beat them in extra time or something, and we'll, we'll see. It's, it's a long way away, that. If we do win that semi-final second leg, I will play the final on, on a video. I'll edit it down to like... Just so it doesn't take up the whole video, just so I can show you the highlights quick time, I'll, I'll edit it up. It'll take me all, more work on my end, but that is what it is. Uh, it's, it's better for you guys, and that's what I'm all about. So, yeah. We have lost against Empoli 2-1, which was really annoying. We lost against Lazio 3-2, and then we lost against AC Milan again, 3-1. We have got Pisa next, and then we've got Lecce, Modena, Atlanta, AC Milan, Brescia. So we've got AC Milan and Atalanta that are the really tough games left and everything else is winnable oh actually Fiorentina have been top of the league for half of this season they are second right now um, they are putting up a nice fight so that's a tough game as well they actually did win the title as well like four seasons ago which is interesting I actually didn't know that until I checked a couple of months back so <clears throat> all that's been going on what I have I'll show you some of the guys as well that's improved since the last update. If I don't show them, they've not changed that much. And well, Toffanari is up next then. He has improved since December quite nicely. He's dribbling now. He's all the way up to nine. He's now looking like genuinely he could be the the proper right wing back for when we change formation. Like he's not far away now from being the guy that can do the job. Obviously, he needs to be a little bit quicker. I need to get the acceleration up to 13. Off the ball up to like 8 or 9. He's dribbling up to maybe 10 or 11. And he's technique up a little bit. Because I want him to be able to be technical enough to get past players. Uh, to dribble. To uh, to have good technique when he's passing inside. Because if you haven't got good technique and good composure. And good passing. You're playing wing back. You're going to be playing the ball inside a lot. Because there's no winger in front of you. And I don't want the ball. I don't want him to be bad at passing. And playing inside pass. And they get taken off us in the counter attack. I want him to be good enough on the ball to be playing right wing back. At the moment he isn't. Uh, we do have a wing back coming through in this intake now, which is fantastic. So hopefully he's good. We'll see. But I do like the 16 stamina. Uh, the physicals are really good. Again, I just need to get his acceleration up. His pace has been flying. He's a good defender. He's good work rate. Good decision maker, which is really nice. He's brave. He can mark. He can cross. He's got a lot of good attributes. He does play very well as well. If we look at this, in the league, he's played 22 games. 18 starts, 4 subs. He's got 6.9, which is good, especially at 18 years old. And he's not 19 until like... 
nine months time so he's got a long way to go yeah i don't think he's anywhere close to his full potential which is crazy he's a good serie b player at the moment and he's potential he doesn't look like he's stopping he's a potentially serie a standard player which is really nice uh, if i look at his progress bar like i said since december which was the highest spike but then he's gone up and up and up since that so Goffinari is fantastic. He's playing every single game now. He is first choice. He's Nasri is looking like he's sort of run his race in terms of potential. So Goffinari is the number one choice. Daniele Renai then. Again, we're going to show you this guy. He's gone up as well for a few attributes. He's 14 positioning, 14 heading and 14 jumping reach now, which is really nice. Hopefully that goes to 15, 16 when he gets older and we get someone who can score headers from corners. Because at the moment, we don't really have anyone that's very good in the air. So we're struggling corner uh, set piece wise. It is what it is. I like the fact he's got good bravery and aggression. So if his jumping reach can go up even further, it's nice it's gone up by one. I'm liking that. But if it can go up to 15, 16, that's amazing. This guy's also first choice. He's not playing as well this year, which I don't like. 26 games, 6.73. Development, he did go up in September. He jumped up massively in January and February. And then he went back down. I don't know why that is. I'm not entirely sure why that is. But again, good Serie B player, potentially Serie A player. So... We are now looking upwards rather than downwards. I don't think we should finish any lower than 10th, like I mentioned last uh, last episode. Another thing as well, next episode, not this one, but the next one at the start of the next season, I'm going to get the bingo sheet out again and the progress sheet out. And we're going to go through that for the first couple of minutes of the next episode. See what we've got to tick off, see what we need, etc. Obviously, we're not going to get every single objective on that sheet, I don't think. But it'd be nice if we can tick a few more off. Because obviously I am aware that I've not used it as much as I'd like to. But I also didn't want to show it every single ep every single two episodes. Because if I didn't have anything to mark off, it would be a pointless feature. I want it to sort of be a bigger thing where we can tick off three or four things every couple of seasons. And it's a bit more engaging rather than just throwing it in every episode. It feels a bit lazy. I'm going to show you guys Eduardo Rocky now. <laughs> He's a, he's a weird one. He won't change from two-star current ability. Now, every single time, I've just got to tell you guys, every single time I've done this save, I've done it in England. I've completed it in England, and I've completed on stream, and I've completed it offline on myself in Spain, in previous FMs. I've tried it in Portugal on stream. I've tried it in Portugal. Basically, I've tried it in Greece as well. I've tried it loads of different times. And every single time I've had an, the same experience as a player like Rocky, it's 95% of the time being because he hasn't got much potential. But there's, there's no reason why this guy won't improve with a lot of games, but other players do. There's no reason for it, other than his potential isn't as high as we thought. Now, he's wanted by Lazio, I think it is. Oh, now it's Juventus, which is weird, because you'd think that means he's got potential. So why is he still... In it? If you look at the graph from April last year to March now, he has gone up, but it, I don't know what it is. I'm not entirely sure what it is. If we look at his all-time improvements, it's not that high. Like, his dribbling's gone up by four because I've hard-focused it. Um, his physicals have gone up a little bit, not much. I know you guys can't see it, but they've not really gone up that much. Um, concentration up two, anticipation up three. Some things have gone down. And that just tells me that they're going down for other things to go up, which means his potential is not very high. Because if I look at other players, like Toffanari, for example, then they will have upward arrows on every single attribute. Now, I was thinking as well, it could be that he's a balanced personality. But Toffanari was also a balanced personality. He's now jovial, but he was a balanced personality, I'm pretty certain, when he came through. And this guy, if you look at this guy's progress, go to the uh, all-time, pretty, pretty everything's up apart from set pieces, um, and like his physicals have flown. I'm just going to show you guys there. Like plus four, plus three, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus two, plus five. That was with a balanced personality. Now I know there's different spectrums of balanced. But he's not moving Rocky and it's worrying me a little bit. I don't know what to do with that. I feel like I'm, and now I feel like I'm wasting my time playing him a little bit because he's not improving. But then I look at his graph and it looks like he is. So I don't know what to say. You guys can uh, let me know what you guys think to that. Please do. Troyani then. Troyani had his, has had his biggest upgrade over the last couple of months. It's because I've started playing him. He's played three starts now in Serie A, six substitute appearances. He's scored as well. Um, if we look at his progress, progress bar, it has gone up since December. It's gone right up way to here. I am playing him more now over Gargiulo. Um, 
he has also as well, which is the worst thing that could have happened, really. As a deep line playmaker, which is where I saw him, he got the trait, gets forward whenever possible, which I really don't like, so I'm going to have to retrain it. It came through a mentoring group, but he's not even, even in a mentoring group, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, he's learned it off someone. Maybe he's learned it off Gagi Ulo, because I'm pretty sure Gagi Ulo has gets forward whenever possible. Yeah, like I thought, he does. So maybe it's not as big a deal then, because Gagi Ulo is our deep line playmaker, and he's been fine for so long. And he's got gets... So maybe it was him that gave him that. I don't know. Maybe he was like, right, I know you guys, you're taking over my spot. Um, so here you go. Have one of my traits. Likes to lob goalkeepers away. Never in that position, really, to lob him. But he always plays quite well. I mean, if we look at his history, he's a proper legend. A, a real-time legend. From Serie C to, honestly, his best season. I know his best season technically is there in Serie B, but look at that there 7.16 it's only 0 0.01 um away from that in Serie A so he's come a long way and he's had better seasons in Serie A than he has in Serie C obviously he's better now but this is a proper legend I'm gonna get this guy he's done 25 grand a week now which is a lot for how good he is but I had to do it to keep him so I could bring the next players through and Troyani looks like he's gonna be coming through into that into that mold um so Gagiulo I'm gonna try and make him a coach and stuff like that. So as soon as I can, as soon as it says on his information, he's looking to be a, a coach, I will get into his uh, DMs sort of thing, and I will uh, I will try and get that sorted. Niccolo Leone as well has got a lot better since the last time you guys saw him. As you can see, his physicals are now looking very, very decent. He's only 17. He's only really, he's got nine months until he's 18, and he's this good. Now, he's also worth up to 20 million now. Next season, oh, what's that negative there? Thinks for I know he's right. Oh, yeah, because that's another thing I need to talk to you guys about. So a lot of the players came and said that there's a problem with depth in the goalkeeper department. Now there is, honestly, there is. And nine players are agreeing with it. And I did say, I did say that I would sort it and young players would come through. Now, I'm a bit scared to play the young goalkeepers. So I don't know what to do about it. Might cause a bit of problems. Do I potentially just play? Do I sacrifice Europe and get a new goalkeeper in um, to take over Bianco? Because Bianco is sort of wasted minutes now. But we will lose more games with a new goalkeeper in. So I don't know what to do. It, it's a tough one, that. I was, I was hoping I could wait until the goalkeeper in the under 18s was a bit better. And then I could swap him over and take a bit of a hit for half a season. But anyway, Leone... He's playing attacking midfield now behind the striker. Well, he always has been, but now he's scoring goals a little bit. Six goals, six assists. Now he's he's underachieving his XG by a lot. He's actually accumulated 11.6 XG. Um, and that's not from any penalties either. So we're creating chances for him. He's just not taking them right now. But I suppose that's fine for now. That keeps being a thing. We might have to give him a trait or two to stop that. Maybe give him places shots because he's got good technique. I don't know. We'll see. But his progress bar since December has gone up again. It's gone a little bit down again. I don't know why, but... He's just getting better and better and better. And now he's a starting player constantly now, which is really good because I don't have to worry about him bringing our performances down like they were before. Tommaso Pucci then. I know you guys are expecting him and here he is. He's now a three-star advanced forward and look at the physicals. The physicals are helping us out so much. He's just the guy now that we can ping the ball to and he can get in behind. Now he has got the facilities to actually be able to get in behind, stay in behind and finish. So he's, he's every single match. Well, every single month, I would say, he's looking more and more like a Serie A striker, like a top one that we can maybe take into the Champions League and score a lot of goals in there. Composure's going up, which is I've, I've tried to retrain, I've tried to train there with the final third, so that's going up with decision-making. I'm going to keep that on for a little while, and then I'm going to go back to advanced uh, attacking movement to get his off-the-ball up to 14, his anticipation up to 14. Once they've hit 14, then I will work on his ball control to get, try and get the dribbling up to like 11 or 12. First touch will get to 15, technique will get to 15, and then we'll see where we're at after then. But that is the plan. To sort of bring those up. If you keep raising the weak, if you keep raising the bottom of the weaknesses up, then they become an all-round stronger player. So the physicals will look after themselves. They're improving absolutely fine. We don't need to touch them. Um, but yeah, he's got 12 goals, 11 goals in 22 games. So he's scoring a goal every other game in Serie A, which is amazing. He's been not very good in Europa League, which is a bit annoying. I don't know if that's because it's classed as a big match. I'm not sure. But then again, he's scoring goals against Juventus. I don't think it's that. Um, I just think our whole team wasn't very good in Europe. 
weird. I don't know why, but in the league, this guy is very good for us. He almost always turns up. Sometimes, obviously, as a 6.3, 6.4, but anyone does that, never mind a 17-year-old. At the start of the next season, he'll be 18. Once he reaches 18, I'll be giving him an eight-year contract, which will be five years plus three. We're not going to lose anyone else like we've lost Bonomi. He's not really improved, but just so I was going to show you guys the player that I was going to bring in for Bianco, the goalkeeper. It's Enrico Villigiardi. Now, I understand his potential has gone from five, five to four and a half, which suggests he's not going to be like a world-class goalkeeper. But he's the under-18s Italian goalkeeper. He's got a good personality and he's got decent base attributes. Now, I don't know if playing him now, I mean, I do know if playing him now would cost us points. It would. But I don't want the players to be annoyed at me. So I don't know if we just sack off the last bit of this season, the last nine games, just play this guy finish about 8th or ninth, and then we've potentially got a new goalkeeper that can hold his own I'm not sure what do we think I'm not that it's a difficult one when to breed them in sometimes um, if I show you the, the other goalkeeper I've got Bianco here he's 28 which is fairly young for a goalkeeper and honestly this guy is very good he has only got 8 clean sheets but that's usually that's because of how we play really um He's a very solid goalkeeper. Good concentration, decent agility and balance as well. Uh, good kicking. He's got a good kick on him when he kicks it long. Good reflexes. He's been really good for us again. If we look down here, uh, he came in in Serie B and he's been really good, honestly. Uh, 11 clean sheets last year, which is the most he's ever got joint with the Serie B season there. And um, there's no real point to playing him anymore. But I think now I've looked at Bianco... As good as he is, I think we're going to try and phase him out, maybe. I think that's what I'll do. Obviously, when we play like in the semi-final of the Cup against AC Milan, I'll put Bianco back in. In, in big games, I'll put Bianco back in. But against the teams that we've got a lot of favourable fixtures, I think I'm going to put the other guy in and see where we are at the end of the season. Okay, then. So, intake time. Let's have a look at this intake. We want centre midfielders and we want wing-backs. That's what we want. Let's have a look. One, two, three... Oh, we've got five elite talents, which is nice. A centre midfielder, a left winger, a centre back, a centre midfielder, and a right wing back. Okay, he's two star current ability as well. Suleiman Gondo. I've just noticed as well we've got a Belgian guy. Do we think that he came from Le Liège? Surely. Surely this guy's come from Liège. Has to have done. We've never had a Belgian before. I've got an affiliate and now we've got one. And he's good. Wow. We've got an Ivory Coast guy as well, which is interesting. If we scroll down a little bit further, we've got another, another guy that's a left back. There's four and a half stars. You guys can see that? You can see that. We've also got Jean Saenz, who looks who looks French, Spanish, Basque-ish. That's, that's what, yeah, I think. Yeah, Basque. Definitely Basque. So he's okay. I know we've had a look at him there, but 15 passing, 11 vision. Runs with the ball often. It looks all right, to be honest. It doesn't look too bad. Um, obviously, we'll stick him in the under-18s. Let's have a look at the rest of them then. We've candidates. So, potential. And we're going to go to team view. Oh, the determination from the Belgian guy is 20. Driven. Fairly professional, fairly professional, fairly professional, fairly professional. Driven, got a balanced. I've got a fairly professional here, just in Zella, the German guy, six foot two. We might sign him up too. Yeah, we're gonna, we're definitely gonna sign this guy up. He looks decent, doesn't he? Um, we're not gonna sign this guy up. Three and a half star, unambitious. This here, Bocca Foglia, fairly professional, three star. I, I don't know what we do with him. Maybe I sign him up just to see what happens. I think we should. Um, and then this guy, Padaghi. No, I'm not going to... He's not going to do anything. Three composure, four, four work rate, five teamwork. No. Okay, so... We're going to have a look then... At... Francesco Coppolo, because that guy is one-star current ability. Have a look at Coppolo, left back. Okay. Five foot nine... 13 tackling, he can defend. He's got decent base attributes. The three off the ball, if we're wanting a wing back, isn't good. 
not very good at running behind. He's not very good at finding space. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with him. He's okay as a left back in a back four. Could maybe, maybe get away with him as a wide centre back at 5'9". I mean, he, he might grow a little bit to 5'10". Um, but Coppolo's not bad. We're definitely obviously going to sign him up. Fairly professional. You never know. He could become a baller. But looks all right for now. We'll probably work on... on what should we work on? I sort of want to work on his off the ball early. But that's attack yeah, I could work on his attacking movement. Because that does help his anticipation and his decision making. Which is good for defenders. So, yeah, we're going to work on his attacking movement to start with. Get it up to maybe 5 or 6. Then I'll go somewhere else. Maybe he's dribbling. Get his ball control up. Because he can defend. And they will go up themselves. Uh, but Francesco Coppolo is not too bad, is it? Right, what else have we got? Better look at John Sayens, but we'll have a look at him again. Good natural fitness, good balance, good passing, good teamwork, good technique. He's only one star coin ability, so he's not going to be in the first team anytime soon. But we can definitely get him. Fairly consistent too. We can definitely get him in the under 18 and see where he gets, because that is a good player to get, I think. So good attributes at the start, which is nice. Next one then we're looking at is Mattia Penizza, or is it Penizza? Penizza, it's got to be Penizza, hasn't it? 16 years old, this guy is born and bred in Livorno, DM, fairly professional again, 11 determination. Let's have a look. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. I like this because if, I keep saying it, if when we go to the three at the back with two DMs, this guy could be a DM for us. Uh, he's got a little bit of bite in him. He's good tackling, good marking, he's good bravery. Positioning might need to go up a little bit, but he's got good natural fitness, good stamina. I like him. I do. He's very good mental attributes for 16 years old. Um, in fact, he's only just turned 16, so he's literally fresh 16 two days ago. Um, so really, he's like... Yeah. 16. <laughs> I mean, he's 16, isn't he? But he's just turned 16. He isn't anywhere near 6, 17. So that's really good. We've got a full, full year before he turns to professional contract. Wow. I like him. I do. That is, that is probably the best DM we've got in. Gagiulo, obviously, but um, this guy is more of a DM. He's got good tackling, good marking. He's not as much of a passer. But it, we will get his passing up, but I do like him. He could be a really good player. Lack of flair. He has the con He's a bit dirty, but that's going to be the case, isn't it, with um, with a DM. We've got good... So, Mattia, Mattia Panizza, I like him a lot, to be honest. Okay then, the next four and a half star player we've got is Andrea Slagers from Etterbeek. I do wonder if Etterbeek is nearly age. I'm going to check and I'm going to put it on the screen. So yeah, as we can see there, Etterbeek is actually one hours, two minutes away from Liège. So can we count that as a guy from Liège? I'm not sure. I think we've got to, haven't we? He's, it's weird. We've never had a Belgian before and all of a sudden we've got a Belgian. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look at Andrea Slagers then. 14 dribbling, six foot, can tackle, good technique, good positioning. Wow, he's a diff. A weird one, isn't he? But this guy could be a Segundo Volante, couldn't he? I like the attributes. The long shots is bad. Oh, why do you not need Segundo Volante a dribbling for that? I thought you needed a dribbling. Apparently you don't. Okay. More like a deep line playmaker with six passing. Yeah, I don't think he really fits any mould for us. It's weird. Uh, obviously, we'll make him into one. He's obviously going to be a good player. 20 determination as well. Wow. He's, I don't know. Like, 14 dribbling, you'd think, oh, then maybe he's... More of an attacking midfielder. And then you see 8 off the ball and 14 positioning. And then you think, oh, okay, so he's a defensive midfielder. Yeah, it's weird. 6 foot, which I like. Natural fitness. Bravery. Got some good attributes. Not sure what to do with him. Weird one. Again, you guys in the comments might have to let me know. His best role right now is centre midfield defend. Which probably makes sense. Either way... He's also got a competitive streak. Not consistent, but that's fair enough. Determination should carry him a long way, though. Media handling style. Unflappable. That is really, really good. He's a Livorno supporter. That is interesting. That is interesting. He came from Etterbeek. A Livorno supporter. Now I'm wondering if I have any... I do. 
Oh, is he French? Oh, he's Belgian. Ferreira. Now I'm wondering if Ferreira's had an impact on him. Brussels. I think Brussels is closer to Etterbeek than Liège. The plot thickens. I'm not sure what to say. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, he's good anyway. So that's really nice. Okay, now we get to the three. Hopefully, the three ballers. Right. First of all, we're going to go Giacomo Boschetti. 15. Looks like a left winger or a central attacking midfielder. Could be nice for our three at the back formation. Spirited, level-headed. Really like that. Ooh. It looks like more of a winger because he's only got five vision. In fact, he's a natural wing. This is going to be interesting. He can't be a wing back because he's got two positioning, four concentration, and five marking, three tackling. He's not a wing back. Four finishing, so he can't like be a shadow striker. Do here. This guy sort of. If this guy starts becoming really good because he's got good physicals as well, then he might put a spanner in the works of the. Back. But again, I can't change, can't change formation just for one guy. So maybe we hard force the vision, and maybe make him less like more like a playmaker. I don't know, like a roaming playmaker because he's good physicals, good dribbling. He's good, so we're going to use him. Obviously, at the moment we're in the four to three one. So in the under 18s they they'll be playing on the left wing, so that's fine. He will improve quite nicely. But I just wonder what we could do to focus on that. I think I'm going to focus. Don't know yet. Consistent, which is nice. Positioning two. He has to be playing in an attacking position, doesn't he? He has to be playing in opposition. Position is a defensive attribute, isn't it? The attribute reflects the ability of a player to read a defensive situation and position themselves. It is not used in attacking situations. Rather, it is used to determine how well a player identifies a threat, when to deal with it, and whether or not they're in the best position within their So, off the ball, he's not very good. We shall see. It's interesting. Interesting. Right, okay. Next, we're going to have a look at Alessandro Verdi, which is another centre-back, by the way, but this guy looks like he could be special. He's already started as a two-star centre-back, so effectively, he could be our backup centre-back in the first team now at 50. I'm really hoping this guy's good. Alessandro Verdi. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, he is. He really, really is. 16 tackling off the rip. 12 marking, 12 heading, 13 positioning. Everything you could want, really. This guy could be Champions League level centre-back, couldn't he? Could be. Definitely. Could 100% be that guy at centre back. Wow. I wonder how much he's worth when he joins. Um, might have a problem with the injuries, which is. I mean, he's got competitive streak as well. They're downsides, aren't they? See? Got bad injury problems, that could be. I think straight away, I'm going to work on his composure and decision making. Uh, because he's, he, he doesn't really need to help with his defending. He's already good. That will go up itself to 14, 15, no problem. If not more. Physicals eventually, but they'll take care of themselves pretty much straight away because in uh, when you're like 15 to 18, your physicals have the highest uh, development. So leave that for now. But he looks very, very good. A little bit worried about the injuries and the competitive streak. More about the injuries, to be honest, because if he's not on the pitch, then it's a worry. Uh, but he does look very, very, very good. Suleimani Gondo then. I love that we've got an African player in as well. Wing back right. Interesting. He's not a right back. He's just a wing back. So 13 determination. Fairly professional and he's reserved, which is really nice. So this guy's got like a really, really good personality. Let's have yeah, he's good. He is very, very good. Because if you look at it, he's got pace straight away. 15 years old. He's got 13 pace, 13... Acceleration, 13 stamina. Five foot three is a bit of an issue. He can tackle a bit. He can mark a bit. Good off the ball straight away. Good flair for a right wing back. Good teamwork, which is really nice. Can cross, can dribble straight away at 15. He's going to be 
I think he's going to be a 30, 40 million pound player. He's going to be with us a long term, long time. We can obviously retrain him as a right back if we do decide to stray as, as a four at the back. It would be a very good wing back in a four at the back. It'd be even better wing back in a three at the back. This is one of the guys that... I'm wondering if Mattia Rizzi now might have to go in the attack. Or maybe Mattia... We've got Toffinari and Nasri, haven't we? Yeah, we're now inundated with right backs. We're not as many left backs. But he looks very, very good. Very, very good. Wondering if... Now, Anaz is Nigerian. He's from Agni Billy Crew. I don't know where that is. Ivory Coast. So he is got a problem with his consistency, which is fair enough. He's 15. But he's already close to Nasri. I like him. We've got some good players there. We've got three or four very good players that I can see in the first team. Really nice. That is, again, another really good intake. So if we go to the staff members and we go to Onya Onazi, he's now learning his Continental A license. I don't think he that much yet. Maybe as he gets older, it goes up. I was under the assumption that as soon as they get the license, the next license, their attributes go up. Doesn't like it's the case, does it? So we'll see. If we do, though, if we do get to a four-star team next season, which is hopeful, then we might have access to another level of head of youth developments. Now, I'm a little bit hesitant to change Anazi because of how good he's doing right now. But that is, what, eight, another eight players? Nine players with this guy that I can sign up, which is really, really nice. So that's going to be it for today's video then, guys. Please leave a like. Please leave a subscription on the channel. That would be amazing. Please leave a comment as well with anything we've discussed in the video. And until next time, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.